In this video, we are going to practice problems in naming polymers using IUPAC nomenclature. To learn how to name polymers using IUPAC nomenclature that will be useful for solving the problems in this video, refer to the video provided in the link. Let's look at the first question. In this question, we have a constitutional repeating unit which has an amino group followed by a cyclohexide group followed by a phenylmethylene group followed by a pyridine ring. To write the IUPAC name, we want to make sure that the groups are in the right order, which means we move from left while moving from left to right. The group that has the highest priority should be on the leftmost. In this case, pyridine has the highest priority because heterocyclic rings get the highest priority. So if we put the pyridine ring on the leftmost, then there are two options. We can put the amino group next because that follows the pyridine ring on the right side or we can put the phenylmethylene group because that follows the pyridine ring on the left side. So on the right side of pyridine ring would be the amino group on the left side would be the is a phenylmethylene group. So which one do we put? According to the IUPAC nomenclature the heteroatom gets precedence. So, the NH group goes next. Now, the rest follows according to the flow of the polymer chain, which would be cyclohexyl followed by the phenylmethylene. Now, we have the structure written in the order that we can name it. So let's start naming. We first write poly followed by parenthesis. Now we have to number the pyridine ring. Nitrogen gets number one and then we can go anti-clockwise in which case the carbons of the pyridine ring that are connected to the adjacent groups get the number two and four. If we go clockwise, then the carbons of the pyridine ring, which are connected to the adjacent groups, get the number 4 and 6, which is higher. Since 4 and 6 is higher than 2 and 4, we have to go anti-clockwise to get the correct number. So, this would be poly 2, 4 pyridine dial Note the suffix dial, which refers to the 2, 4 being the carbon atoms that are connecting to the adjacent groups, followed by amino, and then we have cyclohexyl. So again, we have to do the numbering. We can start numbering from here and get 1, 4 by going clockwise or even by going anti-clockwise, it would be 1, 4. So... It is amino 1, 4, cyclohexyl or cyclohexylene, okay, right? Lean because it again refers to the 1, 4 carbon atoms that are adjusting, uh, that are connecting to the neighboring groups and then followed by phenylmethylene or just methylene because methylene anyway has just one carbon. So this would be the name poly 2,4 pyridine diol imino 1,4 cyclohexylene phenyl methylene. Let's see the next question. Now, this is a spiro compound 
because it has a carbon that is attached to two rings if one carbon is attached to two rings that would then that's a spiro compound we name such compounds by the, by the word spiro followed by square brackets followed by the size of the smaller ring or the number of carbon atoms in the smaller ring without counting the connecting carbon followed by the number of carbon atoms in the larger ring without connecting the carbon atoms so if x is the number of carbon atoms in the smaller ring and y is the number of carbon atoms in the larger ring it would be spiro xy and then followed by the total number of carbon atoms in the ring uh, or total number of atoms in the ring which would be typically x plus y plus 1 for the connecting um, carbon atom and then a and e so let's follow this method to name the spiro polymer that we have so we start with poly followed by sp spiro right well let's open the bracket and now we have to start numbering we know we can see that this the smaller ring has three atoms and the larger ring has five atoms excluding the connecting carbon so it's going to be spiro 3 5 but there is an additional thing to pay attention to there is one oxygen atom so let's number the uh, the spiral the numbering is done such that you start from the smaller ring adjacent to the connecting carbon so if we start from the smaller ring that is adjacent adjacent to the connecting carbon we have to start from here one two three four five six seven eight nine now we got it number and so oxygen gets the number five so this will be five oxospiro three five and then we have to write the total number of atoms which is nine so instead of writing non in we would write non-aline right so because we have the it's a monomer which is connected to, connected to adjacent carbon atoms adjacent uh, monomer units so it would be non nil and two seven eline okay so we have 5 oxospiro 3 5 nonyl 27 eline 27 referring to the carbon atoms which are bridging to the adjacent monomer units okay let's look at this here we have a six membered ring with two oxygen atoms that is called as a dioxane so let's number it numbering the dioxane we start with an oxygen atom so one two three four five six so this is the only way we can number such that both the oxygen atoms get the lower number we have the substituent propyl group here let's start writing poly Two 
to propyl one three dioxanyl four six eline methylene okay so two propyl one three dioxanyl oxanyl four six eline methylene that would be the name now one more here we have an oxygen so let's start naming poly oxy for oxygen and then this is a methylene group but with a substituent which is methyl ethanol okay so this group ch3 o co it's called as a methyl sorry methyl ch3 o co ch2 it's called a methyl and this is called ethanol so it is oxy one methyl ethanol methylene Hope this was useful.